Hello everyone, and this is part two of creating an online multiplayer game in Game Maker Studio 2. So today we'll be making this. Last time we only had the server displaying the connected players, but today I'll be showing you how to get the characters in sync with their movement, image angle, all that good stuff is synced up. So today I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, so first in the client, some new things we have are creating our instance map. This map is going to hold the IDs for all of the instances currently connected to the server. We go ahead and make a variable called IDD to hold the ID of our client. And then we hold the instance ID of O player in the player variable and we set our client ID to be the player's my ID and I'll show you that in a second and then we simply add our instance ID with our client ID to the instance map I've created a player and he has a simple sprite and he's solid and in the create event I have randomize this only needs to be run once during your game so I have network variables which is our ID and I just have it set to choose a random number between 1 and 10,000 so hopefully this you know this reduces the range of the same ID uh, being connected more than once. Then in our step event of the player is where we send our data and uh, do the movement. So here we say if our client exists and our ID is equal to the client's ID then we can move because remember if these were different that would mean that we're talking about a different player connected to the server. So then I just have some basic movement set up and I also have it so that you can have the player look at the mouse. Then we send our data using a buffer and I create a temporary variable called buff and I set this to be a grow buffer which means the more data we add to it the bigger it gets. Then I send the network.move enum which this enum is created in the clients oh no nope. it's created in the menus creation code so you need to have these enums uh, declared before you use them so it can be in an object uh, that's created once before the server or the client is or it can simply be in a boot room uh, in the creation code. So after I send the network move enum, I send our ID first, which is a U16 value. And then we send S16 values of our X, Y, and image angle. Then we send this using our client's socket. Remember, this is the, the uh, TCP socket we made listen on the server for our client. So we use that to send this buffer back to the server. And we can declare the size of the buffer by using buffer tell. And you want to make sure you delete this buffer after you use it so you don't have any memory leaks in your online game. So that's all for the player. Now comes a few complicated things. So I'm going to start with when the server receives that data we just sent. So I remember in the last video we created the server data script and you can open that. And in here we create a variable called packet and we want to load the buffer that's being sent to us. So we use async load buffer. So that's being stored in packet. So we can seek to the beginning of that packet and we can read the first value of that packet. 
And remember, the first value we sent was this network.move enum. So you'll be switching that ID. You'll be switching that network value. So if it's the move, if you get sent the move packet, then all of this stuff will occur. And you can have as many different enums as you want. This is what people get confused in online. They think it's so difficult when in reality it's it's this simple. This is pretty much all there is to sending and receiving data in GameMaker. We just sent the data from the player. This is our server getting this data. So we get the move data and we read it in the same order that we sent it. So remember we sent our ID first, then we sent X, Y, and image angle. So you want to make sure that you read those in the same order and also use the same data type. So once we've read all of those and stored them in a variable for our server, we can create a new buffer to send back to all of our clients so that everyone connected to the server can say, okay, this person moved. So we need to assign that data to that person and not someone else or in, and not everyone. So here I just write that data back to a buffer in the same order that we read it. And also make sure that you send the network.move enum to make sure the clients know what data you're talking about. Then to loop through uh, the total player list, you just use a for hoop and you say ds list size total players. Now we can send a packet to the socket that we saved to that list for every single person in that list and we just send that buffer that we created and then afterwards we delete it so we don't have any memory leaks so the last part is after the server sent that data we go back into our client async networking event and this is where you receive incoming data from the server so we do the same thing as in the server packet script or the server data script and we read the buffer that's coming in. Then we seek to the beginning of that buffer and we also make sure that we get a packet ID which is the first value of that buffer. Then we go ahead and switch between those values and in case we get the move function or the move value then we need to get the player's ID first which is located secondly in that buffer which is also a U16 value. Now we're going to use that value to find the instance value of that player within our instance map. So we need to create a new variable called find player and this is going to find the value in our instance map that corresponds to this player's ID. So this should return the instance ID of the player that sent this packet. So down here we can say if that player that we found it doesn't actually exist in our map then we need to create that player and add him to the map. Otherwise if he does exist and if our ID does not equal this player's ID and if the player we found exists so they didn't disconnect or anything like that whenever this packet gets sent through then we can go ahead and read the rest of the data that was sent to us so we had our player X Y and image angle now since this player must exist we can go ahead and say find player dot X equals player X find player dot Y equals player Y and find player dot image angle equals player angle and that's all there is to it, guys. That's all there is to creating movement in online. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be talking about creating a chat system and also shooting. I hope to see you there. I'll see you guys next time.